Welcome to Christian Overcomer's Weekly Wednesday Night Bible Study. We thank you for joining us as we study God's Word to show ourselves approved, chapter by chapter and verse by verse. And now, here is Pastor Ben Heath. All right, thank you for joining us for this Bible study. Today we're going to cover Genesis chapter 6, and we're going to title it, The Giants. You know, this is such a fascinating study in God's Word, and I wish I had more time to teach it, because it is also such an important one to understand. Perhaps later on down the road, we will do a mini-series dedicated to this. But today, will be an introduction to this topic, The Giants. Were they a myth or a reality? Let us find out. Let us turn to Genesis chapter 6 verse 1. And it reads, And it came to pass, when men, or Adam, Adamites, began to multiply upon the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, here we go, that the sons of God saw the angels of, or saw the daughters of Adam, that they were fair, they were beautiful, and they took them wise of all which they chose. It's important to understand who these sons of God were. They were the angels. And the Septuagint will actually renders it this way as the angels. That is the, uh, the old Greek manuscripts of the Old Testament. But never, uh, nevertheless, in the uh, Hebrew manuscripts, the word uh, the sons of God here would be the Elohim, the angels. So we're talking about supernatural beings here coming from heaven to uh, and they saw the daughters of Adam that they were beautiful and decided to marry them There's something wrong with this here it is against God's plan and against his natural order of things that this would happen and we're going to find out that this was Satan's attempt to prevent the seed of the woman from coming into the earth as it is recorded in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, Satan knew that the Messiah would come through this line, through the line of Adam's family, and that he would make salvation available to all peoples. And he wanted to put a stop to that. So you're going to see that this is actually the theme throughout the entire Bible. The war between the serpent and the woman. Throughout every book of the Bible, you will see Satan trying to attack that seed line, the seed line of Jesus Christ. That is why we spent so much time talking about it in the uh, first few chapters of Genesis, about that woman and about her seed. For it it is important. It is the underlying theme of the entire Bible, that warfare that has taken place even unto this day. We'll talk more about that a little bit later, but... So they came to impregnate the daughters of of Adam, verse 3, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he uh, that shall not always strive with Adam. It's important to know in the Hebrew tongue we're talking about the man named Adam, the Adamites, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be in hundred and twenty years. Okay. For you deeper students, notice that it says that he also became flesh. Adam did. And maybe you can better understand what had happened to Adam and Eve after the sin in the Garden of Eden. Who did they become like? Think about it. Verse 4. There were giants in the earth, the Hebrew tongue Nephilim, in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of Adam what does that mean they had sexual relations with them they impregnated these angels impregnated the daughters of Adam in an attempt to pollute the seed line of Jesus Christ and to prevent his coming And they bare children to them, and the same became mighty men which were of old, men 
of renown. So these, these beings, these uh, Nephilim, were the offspring of the fallen angels and the daughters of Adam. They were a hybrid mix. And they would become superhuman in both size and strength. And you will find these written about throughout the Bible. The most famous one being Goliath, whom David slew. So, this isn't a fairy tale. This isn't a myth. These beings were a reality. And you will find, if you do research on it, you Google it or do some research, you will find that these uh, that remains of giants have been found all over the world. Yes, many times uh, um, it seems that these things are uh, covered over and hidden by some in the scientific community. Why? I have no doubt because they give credibility to God's word and his plan and the things that had happened on this earth long ago. Because if people understood Satan's plan and his attempt to destroy the seed of the woman, it would do Satan much harm, for then people would begin to understand what is happening even unto this day. The war that is being directed against the seed of the woman, that remnant of that seed line that keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. For you will, uh, um, anyone with any common sense will know that those people, God's people, have done more for uh, the peoples of the earth than any other peoples, but yet they are the most persecuted and the most hated. You know, I can't uh, well, we'll take, for example, America, which um, any, anybody that's done enough research on it will understand that America is made up of the descendants of the ten tribes of Israel, even some of the other two, Judah and Benjamin. And Americans, as a nation, have done more good in this world than any other nation in the history of uh, mankind and yet we are the most hated do you ever stop and think about that it is because the war is taking place from Genesis chapter 3 verse t uh, 15 between the woman and the serpent and the serpent does not like the woman's seed Satan does not like you my friend he does not like America and the things that she stands for So many of you are probably, things are starting to click into your mind right now. And you're beginning to see God's overall plan. And those scales of deception are peeling away as, as some of these lies that have been spread forth by the scientific and even our religious community. Concerning the details of God's plan and the purpose of these people. And here we're witnessing an assault against them. A direct, purposeful, uh, uh, purposeful attack upon the, uh, the offspring of the woman here. Okay. And you also find out, have you ever wondered where the heroes of Greek mythology came from? Well, here you have it right here. It was stemmed off of some truth and then, you know, uh, stories got made up along the way. But these were real beings. Real creatures that lived upon the earth in super, well, somewhat of a superhuman form. Uh, many of these giants were found to be 15 feet tall. For example, one in the Bible um, was the was Og, king of Bashan, and uh, written about in Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 11. His bed was said, was recorded to be about 14 feet long and 6 feet wide. Thus Og would have been at least 13 feet tall. Amazing. Amazing the things that have been hidden from us by our academic community. 
And again, 